Do you have a dog barking problem? Well, I do. In this edition of Energy Secrets, we are going to be trying out a safe, effective, and humane solution to solve my dog problem and hopefully yours. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've yet to do so, click there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications so you don't miss an update. And then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Tula, she likes to bark. It feels at times to me that it has gotten worse. <laughs> are there things that you can do at home? For sure there are. There's an array, I mean, there's some great dog trainers. There's some great dog training videos on YouTube. I'm gonna to link to some of those training videos. And I encourage all of you first, like before you sort of go down the path of trying some anti-dog barking device, ensure that you have, at the very least, you know, gone through all these array of different dog training videos. You've got a dog that is fairly well trained. You've got some established, you know, you've learned some basic principles of how to one, you know, establish boundaries in your house. So your dog is listening to you. You've learned how to get attention uh, in terms of you know getting your dog's attention away from the thing they're barking at onto you ideally you're interrupting that before it happens in the animal shelter we would have dogs that we wanted to uh, that were rescue dogs they're not adequately trained at all I mean, who knows their entire history as you know with any animal that's gone into an animal shelter so we i want some time with them we want to have them outside we had I had a big fence backyard behind the clinic but we also had neighbors. So some of those dogs, they would just bark and bark and bark. The neighbors would get so frustrated. That's it, we're calling the bylaw officer again and we get the bylaw would visit. Like, you can't do this. There's a noise bylaw. You can't have your dogs barking. It's like, okay. So we're like, what is a, aside from me assigning a staff to hang out there all day, which wasn't feasible and I wasn't able to do, the next best thing, okay, let's look at some humane solution that's gonna stop these dogs from barking especially the big problem dogs, because often it'd be one dog would start and everybody would start, that we could use that is safe, humane, also works. Hmm. This came in the mail. It is the Pet Save Anti-Bark uh, Citronella Spray Collar, appropriate for dogs that are five pounds and up. Little Tula, she's 20 pounds. You are a fit little Tula, so let's open this thing up, see how it works, and Talk about how best to stop you and other dogs from barking. This is what is included in the Citronella Anti-Bark Collar. We have our instruction booklet of which we are going to go over and follow all the appropriate steps as if you guys are doing the same thing. We have a, a Citronella uh, refill spray bottle. So this is what will be sprayed out, the Citronella spray. We have the uh, the bark call, collar itself uh, with a de device that sprays out the citronella. There it is, pet safe. We'll go all over all of it as I sort of refill it up and uh, set it up properly on Tula. Then we have a battery. Ta -da. This little funky battery. Step one, it is fitting the bark collar. So let's fit this on Tula. So we want to make sure that we position this collar in such a way that the PetSafe logo is visible as Tula lifts up her head on her neck. That you, one, you can see then the refill nozzle, uh, which is here on the left, and then the spray nozzle, which is here on the right. That those are going to be just underneath her neck. So this thing will spray up this little bit bout of citronella a spray when it detects the bark. And that should stop you from barking. You guys can see the pet safe logo, meaning it's in the correct position. You can see the refill port, and you can see where the spray nozzle is right there. Okay, so that's about how it's fitted. So now we have to just snug down this webbing to get this to fit properly. Just like any dog collar, right? You can just get one finger underneath that it's gonna be fitting well on your dog. Not so easy that it's not too tight that's gonna 
constrict their skin and their neck, uh, but also not too loose that they can just rub it off and shake it around. So you want to make sure that when it does spray, it sprays in the appropriate position just underneath your dog's muzzle. Step two next is we're going to get the battery into this. So you can see this battery cover here. It sits on top uh, just above the refill port and the spray nozzle right here just above the Pet Safe logo. So it's got some notch, little notch part of it. So you just got to give it a firm push. Slide that off, which we've done here. And then let's get our battery in. So let's get that in there. Tula. They describe next how to turn it from the off to the on position. So you can see there's currently it's in the off position, the zero position. Turn it to there to the arrow that's in the on position. This little sensor here, this is what senses the barking noise. So you point this away from you and says you can blow into this sensor and you should see it emit a bit of a spray. So we're on to now step three. Let's fill and refill the spray. Before we fill this with citronella spray, first make sure it's in the off position. There, we've just switched it to the off position there. Next, be really clear that you are inserting your here citronella spray into the port that's meant for refill, not try to forcefully put it into some other nozzle. This is the one that emits the spray. This is the one that, the one here is the one that's detecting the bark. So one, remove this collar from your dog and make sure it's turned off. There it's in the off position. Click. Two, set uh, the bark control collar on a flat surface with the refill port turned upwards. That what we've got, here's our refill port it's turned upwards. It is set on a relatively flat surface. Number three part, hold the spray can upright and firmly press the nozzle down into the refill port, holding it firmly for 10 seconds and release. Here's our citronella spray. Here is the nozzle. Here is the port we're gonna refill it in into the bark control collar. Okay, let's put that in and we're gonna sort of snugly fits right in the center and there's a little notch that it fits around. So it actually looks pretty easy enough to figure out. I'm gonna hold that for 10 seconds. Let's count 10 seconds. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Then release. Then it says insert it. Do it for another ten seconds. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Tool is wondering what is going on. It says here, you can auto refill the bark control collar. If spray leaks out, you may need to press harder to complete the seal. Next, turn the bark control or collar to on. So we're gonna test this out before we fit it and test it out on Tula. First, you're gonna switch it to the on, so it's now in the on position, there. Next, we are going to make sure that it's pointing away from us. It's actually pointing towards the camera. I'm going to blow into the microphone, which is right there, at about pretty close to your face, about nine, it says nine centimeters, and this should emit the spray. So this is the first time I've tested this thing. Let's see if this works. I'm mine nine centimeters away, and it works. Cool. Okay, let's try that one more time. Haha. Okay, we've got our little thing spraying. That means it works. Time for the test, Tula. We're now fitting the bark collar on top of little Tula. Just a comfortable, just under your neck, Tula, with the spray nozzle, the logo visible, the spray nozzle pointing up towards her muzzle. Not just slipping around her neck. We did use these quite a lot in the animal shelter. But you know what? I was not the one using them. It was the staff working at the shelter. Okay, we got it fitted there. You guys can see how it fits. So when she's gonna bark, it's gonna spray. So we're gonna keep it in the off position before we're ready to test that out. Okay, a little too long. Couple of the big points, they do suggest that if you, know, you don't leave it on your dog for any more than 12 hours, this is only meant as a train aid. It's not something you're gonna be leaving on your dog for an extended period of time. 
and often because what can happen is you get some um, excess fluid building up under the skin especially under uh, the, the device itself right so that can be irritating to your dog's skin secondarily you don't want to be leaving a spray thing on your dog for hours on end this is mo mostly meant as an aid in uh, training your dog to not be barking or when you can't be present in the present in the house or for example with us in the animal shelter we couldn't always be present in the backyard Third, we often would put these collars on these dogs, some of the dogs, and after they had a couple sprays, they stopped barking, you just flick, flick it on, you leave it in the off position, and they still wouldn't bark, right? So there's, it doesn't need to be spraying your dog all the time. All right, little Tula, let's test this out and see how it works. So this is what happens when someone comes up and bangs on the door. Okay, that's a pretty little <laughs> And they keep hanging. Yes. Uh, so now we are going to switch the spray collar on. The on position, as you guys have seen here. Now it is on. Okay. Now we have the spray collar switched on. Here comes a predator. Someone's coming up to the door. They're gonna make a bunch of noise, and what will happen? Oh, and it sprays. What if what if the person knocks again? Knock again, Liam. Tula stops barking. You saw a little small amount of spray, fairly benign, and you look at that. That worked in three knocks. As you guys can see, that worked really well. I mean, a couple of big things. I mean, my son knocked the door, knocked the door out like, by the third time. Tula figured out like, do not bark when the door knocks. So quick. The other thing I'm really happy about it, it's it's a really small amount of spray, and I'll just show, go through it at the end. Uh, because it's such a small amount, one, we know that it's safe for our dogs. Secondly, two, it's not sort of overly traumatizing. And I was a little worried with little Tula that, you know, this thing would spray and have her shaking and she'd be like, in this crazy fear, kind of like when I get upset and I raise my voice, like, oh no. Yes, and then you start shaking. Oh, and you were, she was an awesome little dog. You are great for that. Roast beef last night means roast beef for little Tula. You're great. Oh, today's gonna be a good day, the roast beef day. Well, I'm really glad that I tried out this Citronella Anti-Bark Dog Spray Collar. I like how easy it is to use, how easy it was to sort of set up with Tula, and how I said relatively benign it is. So I'm going to give it one last little testy little dooley here, switched it on. And here's to you guys having success with stopping your dog from barking. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this edition of Venery Secrets. If you've got to do so, click up there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.